the reason I heard for why they don't say aliens and why they say non-human intelligence or non-human life forms is that we don't, is that there's this issue of as when you're doing space travel, you're also doing time travel. The first thing is David Grush, right? This 36 year old air force veteran who is the whistleblower without providing any of the evidence, without showing any of this stuff, <clears throat> but seems to be a respected member of the military community, intelligence community and all that. Or do you find him to be credible? I do. I find David very credible. He gets very high remarks, high marks from his colleagues, very good track record serving in the military, serving in military intelligence. He uh, was promoted when he went into the the Aero program, which is the Pentagon program studying UFOs. He got a higher security clearance. He followed all the rules when it comes to providing testimony, including whistleblower testimony, and no one has suggested otherwise. So I do. I find him credible. The people I interviewed who also know him are very credible themselves and have high security clearances. And they testified that David is who he says he is. And this is he's not the first whistleblower that I've interviewed. I've actually interviewed a fair number of whistleblowers now, including some former FBI whistleblowers. I'm interviewing other whistleblowers related to other cases. And whistleblowing is a very stressful activity and it affects people differently. And I found David has handled this very well and brings a lot of the same kind of Boy Scout energy that I found with the FBI whistleblowers. What you find often with whistleblowers is that these are people that are not as willing to break or bend the rules as some of their colleagues. They feel they have a commitment to the American people or the US Constitution that trumps their immediate professional loyalties. And so these are people that are obviously willing to buck the hierarchy when they feel like something bad is occurring in these agencies. And David Grush feels that something very bad is happening. And I think he's right, which is that there is a cover-up going on. There's been a cover-up going on for many decades. This The cover-up, it's not a secret that the Defense Department and other intelligence agencies have been covering up UFOs. They've been doing it for decades. And every time something else comes out, you have to rem remember that they have been studying it for a long time, and they just haven't been transparent about what they've been finding with the American people. And more similar along the lines of the credibility, I saw some of the feedback on your article, and I hate to ever dive into comments and deal with that, but I saw some people saying, they were like, oh, Michael, I, I love your work, and I've been singing your praises and now your credibility shot because you're dealing in this fringe science and extraterrestrials and all that. What do you say to that? Is this something you just you believe to be very real and not not conspiracy theorists, not Hollywood, none of that stuff? Obviously, I don't like being criticized. I don't like people saying that to me. On the other hand, I've been doing this for long enough that I've had that said to me so frequently over the last 20 years. Every time I do something, every time I report on something controversial, people tell me that my career is over, my credibility is shot. Yeah. I always take it with a grain of salt. The other thing that happens is that people attribute to me beliefs that I may or may not hold, but have not expressed. And for example, I noticed some people say things like, I wish there were aliens, or maybe that I wish that there were aliens. That is not something that I wish for. I'm not saying that I wish there weren't aliens, but I don't actually know if I think it would be good or bad if that were the case. I'm actually ag agnostic at this point. I'd like to learn more. Also, my article was very straight reporting. I do have opinions about many things, and I write about my opinions and many things. In this case, the only real opinions I expressed is that these were credible people, these are credible people, and that they deserve to be heard, and they were saying absolutely incredible things. And you'll also note at the top of the article, I give a lot of space for the Department of Defense to say what its conclusions are. I also observed that there was a change in the way that the Defense Department was describing this issue. And that in April, the head of Aero, again, the DOD's UFO study arm, they said that there was no credible evidence of extraterrestrial craft or life. 
in response to David Grush, they said there was no verifiable evidence. I'm not saying that they were changing their tune. They're talking about two sort of separate things. But the intelligence community inspector general said that David Grush's testimony was both credible and urgent. And in fact, whether or not there are alien spacecraft or non-human spacecraft is the jargon that people would rather use. That is something that's verifiable. You can go into the U.S. military bases or contractor facilities and look for them. And this is the point that I've been making to many of my friends who are very strong UFO skeptics, which is that if you are sure that there are no non-human spacecraft or non-human craft, because we don't really know how these things would operate, but if you're really sure of it, then you would have no objection. In fact, you should want, you should be the first in line to go and investigate so that you can tell everybody that you were right. right. And which is a very satisfying thing to do. So that's kind of what I point out. I go, great. So we have a question and we're going to go find out. The alternative is that you don't really have a democracy because in a democracy, the civilians control the military. The military does not control the civilian population. So as somebody that believes in democracy and feels very strongly about it, I'm bothered that there is there are clearly people preventing us from getting to the bottom of this and the amount of fear with which the people I interviewed spoke and the retaliation that David Grush, the whistleblower, experienced are all things that should bother us as people that support living in a free and open society, whatever your views are on this issue. So I feel like that is in some ways, I view this work more as coming out of my concern with what I view as creeping totalitarianism in the society than any interest in extraterrestrial. Well, right. or Regardless of the topic, we're just talking about freedom of information and yeah. you know, the American public. Okay. So you said a lot of things there. Let me back up to, let me first start with this non-human term that's being thrown around a lot. Cause yeah. I think that popped up last year, maybe a few months ago, there was a couple articles saying there were materials from not of this planet there was pieces of a craft considered to be non-human. Yes. As far as you understand it, like, it, is that basically saying, is this a, is, are these elements that we don't have on, on, on planet Earth? Are these like structurally things that we don't see? Is it because these things can move? What, what does non-human exactly encompass? I think this is the most straightforward level that the people I interviewed and consistent with David Grush say that these are crafts that humans absolutely did not build. They were not built by the U.S. government. They were not built by our adversaries. And that the reason that they concluded that is not just because they have certainty around everything the Chinese and the Russians, for example, are doing, but that the crafts themselves in many cases were not operable and were just completely outside the realm of what our spacecraft look like and how they function. There was not everybody. Some said that we were able to operate these craft. There have been reports of U.S. military operating these craft. Other people just did not know that David Grush said that the Chinese and the Russians themselves have non-human craft. Other people I interviewed said they did not know. So it's just a lot of uncertainty. But I think the, wit the these witnesses did have certainty that these craft were not made by humans. So that's what gets interesting to me, because with so much uncertainty, what makes you certain that another government, another agency, another group of some sort might just be operating with technology that the regular public, the regular aeronautics community, the regular military might not have. Like, how could we be so certain that it's not just these guys over here in this country or this group are more technologically advanced than we're used to? Is it, is it just that far removed from what we're doing that you just, the natural conclusion is like, this is no human could be doing this? Yeah, that's the view of the people I interviewed. And again, what I feel certain about is that these individuals have very high levels of security clearance and very high levels of scientific and technical knowledge and access to the information. And but that's their determination, not mine. I'm not I'm neither a scientist nor an engineer nor an expert, but I'm a journalist and a reporter capable of evaluating sources. 
And for me, that was the most impressive part. And again, I don't have documents, didn't claim to have documents. Right. Definitely we're dealing with uh, people with just the testimony from people. At the same time, they all say there are not only craft, but there's lots of documents and videos and photographs and plenty more. And they're just not being, they're just being withheld from the public. And I think from Congress as well, and so except that, for the ones, of course, the famous ones that have leaked out. So the DOD, I believe they, what they permitted, I guess, David Grush, he followed the protocol as far as how to disclose the information, do it, do an interview, whatever that whistleblowing includes. So they, so like the Pentagon or the government, somebody is saying, go ahead, you're allowed to do this, but you can't show any of the pictures, you can't show any of the videos, you can't show any of the stuff, but yeah. we will let you go do this. That seems to be counterintuitive to me. If you were trying, if you don't want people seeing it and knowing about it, why even al allow this and why now? It seems like at least maybe I'm thinking about pop culture and movies and all that stuff. But we've always heard the people who are going to talk are silenced one way or another. In reality, it's just as simple as, hey, I was on the job. I found something I don't like going on. I want to go talk to reporters about it and I'm going to do it. So let's follow protocol. And they just say, OK, sounds good. I was surprised to see that they allowed it as well, to be perfectly Crazy. honest. It's not the first time. Louis Elizondo and Christopher Mellon, who also did have permission to speak, and the and all of those, everybody I spoke to as well, there were things they would not tell me. I would ask, I would say, I'll keep it off the record. I won't repeat it. And they just wouldn't, they wouldn't tell me. I also did learn the names of the programs, but agreed not to reveal the names of those programs. So there were some things that I ag agreed to not reveal. And I also chose I not to- there for a second? Yeah. <laughs> You're a credible journalist and you've done great work, but if these guys are taking this so seriously and like, how could, how could they trust anybody to just say off the record or not repeat it again? If we're talking about something as serious as this, a handshake promise from a journalist seems why? why? Yes. Yeah. And the first thing I'll say is that there's always the possibility that that I'm a victim of a disinformation effort, that the government is, for some reason or another, actually encouraging speculation and discussion of alien spacecraft. I don't think that's the case, in part because I believe there's a lot of evidence, and I've seen it myself, that these guys... These folks have been victims of retaliation. David Grush describes that. Grush and Leslie Keene, one of the authors of the original debrief article, they say that there's specific kinds of retaliation that there's an investigation into. So if it is, it's extremely elaborate. And I would also just notice that really what we've seen since 1947 in the United States is an as a disinformation effort that's gone mostly the other way, which is to deny that the military right. has been studying this very intensely. And in fact, in a very famous instance, there was this official Air Force study called the Blue Book Project in the 60s. And one of the people involved in it, one of the assistant researchers named Jacques Vallée, is a French person played by Francois Truffaut in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Valet discovered that there was a separate effort by the U.S. government that was much better funded and involved many other contractors and senior scientists that they did not know about. So we know that there, there has been significant interest and that the Defense Department has repeatedly, Defense Department and other agencies have repeatedly misled the public and Congress about the extent of their interest. In terms of why they were willing to speak to me, I think there's basically two reasons. The first is that I actually had done a previous piece on a UFO crash, which was a crash in Brazil that I wrote last year in the New York Post. And I was a little bit embarrassed about it. And so I'd never really tweeted it out or sent it to my list, but it is a big two page story in the New York Post. And I, why were you uh, embarrassed? What's that? Why were you embarrassed about it? Just for the reasons that we discussed at the top of this article, I knew that my audience, which at this point is more of a is more right leaning audience, is made uncomfortable by it. 
Although even on that point, I wouldn't even, there's people that are uncomfortable on the left and the right, I would say at this point. And there's people on the right and the left that are comfortable with it. I have two friends that are both pretty strong Christians, and one of them is totally comfortable with it, and the other one is absolutely appalled. I have another friend who's a very famous atheist, and he's very upset with me about writing about this, but I have other atheist friends that are totally fascinated. I think it's, I think the reaction is very interesting, yeah. but I'm also a careful person. I, I do, of course, care about my reputation because I do want to have the right interviews, but I think that article which was I report I did original reporting as well for it myself. I lived in Brazil. I speak Portuguese. And so I think that then I got some trust from that. And then I also think it was just the experience of being grilled by Congress and standing up to their demands that we reveal our sources and some of the reporting that we've done on the Twitter files and just becoming more interested in the abuses of power that we're discovering in multiple institutions in our society at the same time. I think that was part of being able to build the trust with some of the folks I talked to. Do you get worried about retaliation? I don't. I'm not, not on this issue. Yeah. Uh, Cause it can take many forms. It doesn't have to necessarily be, you're going to get a hood thrown over your head and thrown in the back of a van. We know there's a lot of different ways to suppress and to harm careers and all that. Just as important as the whistleblower are people like yourself who are going to get the the story out there. So you really are just as important to the situation as him, really, in a way. I would be a little nervous out of you. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should be more nervous. You may know that my friend Matt Taibbi, the journalist, has is a victim of an IRS audit that nobody I talk to thinks is coincidental. The audit began the day that he did a Twitter files thread about the CIA's role in this. And then the IRS sent an agent to his house the day that he was testifying in front of Congress. Wow. So I'm basically prepared to, I'm more prepared that I may have an IRS audit. I'm a very careful person, so I'm not right. particularly worried about it other than it taking a lot of time. But no, partly, I think when you get famous enough, I think it'd be, you, be, you get some safety that way. And in fact, right. David Grush, I believe... The I believe what that he said or and that Leslie Keene said that the reason he wanted to go out publicly and didn't want to wait for The Washington Post to make up its mind about the story was that he was feeling under some pressure because of the retaliation that he was experiencing as a whistleblower. And he felt that being in the public eye would bring him some safety. And I think it has. In the regards of now we know David Grush is, we, if anything happens, we can connect dots. I think so. That's basically it's that. Yeah. If something, if you get retaliated against and you're an unknown civil servant, it's harder to get attention for you as opposed to if you're someone that has a public profile already. I think it's, I think you do have some safety. Obviously yeah, in totalitarian societies, Putin and Xi and even I think we saw in Saudi Arabia, places like that, they do go after famous journalists. But here in the United States, so far, that hasn't been as much of an issue, except for the IRS investigation, obviously. Well, that's It's interesting. That's this paradox, right? You almost have to be as loud and public as possible in order to have a little bit of safety. I don't know. At the same time, though, I think about another, like a Jeffrey Epstein. It's like everybody could connect those dots and it just happened, right? If they really, if people really do want to return. You, you're suggesting it wasn't a suicide? <laughs> Let me go, hold, hold on one second. I got to let my dog out. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> no, I, we made this point, actually, right before we wrote the UFO story, we wrote a piece criticizing the media for dismissing Robert F. Kennedy's presidential campaign because he's, he engages in conspiracy theories. And we point out, let's just take a look at the things recently that have been dismissed as conspiracy theories. It includes the idea that the FBI unjustifiably began an investigation of President Trump for allegedly being a puppet of Putin because of prostitutes urinating on him on a bed. <laughs> and the idea that UFOs are not something or that the idea that the Defense Department is studying UFOs not telling us, not only were those conspiracies actually true, or at least in worthwhile hypotheses, there were conspiracy theories spun against them. In other words, it's a conspiracy theory to think that Putin controlled Trump because a bunch of prostitutes urinated on him. It was a conspiracy theory to imagine that the Hunter Biden laptop was somehow a result of Russians getting a hold 
of some Hunter Biden information and then putting it on a laptop and water logging it, as opposed to the fact that Hunter Biden was a drunk and the laptop, it was two laptops and they fell into a bathtub or a pool. So, so I think that we're at a time of very low trust in both government and the media. And so I think that some of the conspiracy, some of the things that get dismissed as conspiracy theories are true. And I think we've also seen a willingness on the part of elites, governing and media elites to label things, to mislabel things, conspiracy theories that they themselves may know are true. Totally. You get you get discredited as tinfoil hat, nonsense, Hollywood garbage. There's that pyramid that they of uh, the levels of conspiracy theories. And the bottom that is now, I think they call it like rooted in reality. MK Ultra, Bohemian Grove, all these things that were considered crazy when they first were floated. So it's just whether or not we have proven these things to be true or false is now retroactively we decide whether they were ever credible. That's maniac. That, that is the logic behind that is crazy to me. And I guess really. It's amazing how powerful it is. It's amazing. What language is so powerful that if you call somebody a conspiracy theorist, it's all. Oh, and people get, it's like climate denier, it's like racist. It's, stigma. What's that? There's stigma attached to it that, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, and really all it is, in a lot of cases, you're just like not accepting everything at face value right away. Like the simplest yeah. little bit of skepticism is met with, oh, that guy's crazy. Yeah. And I think just getting back to the UFO phenomenon, when you look at what's occurred since the 1940s, there was just a lot of secrecy, a lot of conspiracies, a lot of conspiracy meaning sort of secret coordinated activity, tons of that. And in fact, as a society, we want there to be secret government activity, most, at least most of us, except for, I guess, a very hardcore number of anarchists or libertarians. There are a set amount of secrets that we would like our governments to keep, sure. military secrets, nuclear secrets, intelligence secrets. We don't want those we don't want secrets. We don't want things kept secret that should not be kept secret. And I think that this is one of them. And in other words, even if there is some, like, if there's, if the, if there is some non-human life form that is visited Earth or some, in some weird way, has craft or whatever, even if they're a threat, we should know that because we want to know about the threats to our country. We want to know if the Russians and the Chinese are a threat. So we really narrowly, we really limit the things that we allow our intelligence agencies to keep secret from us. And we require that Congress have oversight. And in this particular case, there are multiple people that gave testimony to this Aero UFOD group that was withheld from Congress. That's bad. We do not, we want Congress to have oversight. Yes, it should be done in a secure, compartmentalized facility, a SCIF. It should be trusted members of Congress. But nonetheless, that's what it means. That's the difference between living in a democracy versus living in a dictatorship. As I, At least as I understand it, this Arrow group, they were the ones, they said there was no evidence, then they changed it to no verifiable evidence. But then it seemed like in your article, they don't really have the security clearance to maybe have even known about these things. So it's like me saying, that's not real, but I, who am I? So if they don't have this, the correct level of clearance to be in the know, then why do we even care what they, why do they even exist? If they're going to, if they, yes. you know, what I mean? it, it's like, they're, are they just a complete puppet, like puppet group at that point? You've asked exactly the right question. So I think that's one of the most important things that I discovered yeah. is that they do, that this organization arrow within the DOE does not have, the security clearance to get access to intelligence agency information as opposed to defense department information. Okay. So that means that they're not getting all the information. And we also know that there has been that they have withheld information from their witness testimony from Congress. So there's two problems there. And this becomes I there's a reluctance by everybody, including me, to talk badly of this new organization, because in some ways it represents real progress. We've yeah. gone from it being totally secret to now there's this organization. The problem is that actually it's happened like this before. So I mentioned this thing called Project Blue Book, right. which was from the late 50s to the 60s. That was they they had a scientist head that up named J. Allen Hynek. Heineck's job was basically to find 
earthly explanations for the phenomenon that they were tracking. And the French guy, Jacques Vallée, who I mentioned, who worked with Heineck, participated in that. But Heineck himself became convinced that there was something unexplainable still about the phenomenon and that the efforts to wave away the phenomenon by the Air Force were dishonest. And Heineck himself changed and Vallée became a very famous UFO researcher. Another person involved in Blue Book, one of the director, I believe, from 58 to 62, also rejected his role as a PR person for the effort and said that there was more there. And you can see him in the best by far. There's one of the best things ever done on this topic is this film called The Phenomenon by James Fox. It's better than any book. And it really summarizes this history and it has the testimonies of these very credible former government officials and then it happens again, where the Air Force hires a University of Colorado professor named Condon, who does the Condon report, and the and Condon had already decided that there was nothing to the phenomenon and wrote a report saying that. I think it came out in 68. So you've seen a pattern where this issue bubbles up to the surface when there's a lot of UFO sightings or a lot of people describing experiences that don't conform to earthly natural explanations. And then the Air Force goes and does some initiative like this. And they say, yeah, we can't find anything credible or verifiable. But it is verifiable because what the people we interviewed are talking about are physical objects. This is not spiritual or esoteric. These are objects that they say have a physical reality and that they exist in particular places. Members of Congress, in my view, need to go to those places and demand to be let inside and to look at it. The various explanations about why this stuff is being covered up, some of it is just basic worldview. It's just shocking and people are themselves, they don't trust that the public will be able to absorb this. And to some extent, they might be right. I've seen the reaction, I think some percentage of people are much more disturbed about this than others. I think there, there's the possibility is certainly there. Religious implications and military, and it can just rock the core of a lot of society as we know it. I would say, just from my point of view as a total regular person, I feel like there, since probably Roswell up till now, there was like this, there's this whole culture around UFOs and aliens. And almost as in recent years, starting with the dude from Blink-182 and the Tic Tac, UFOs, and then the Navy confirming them, and then the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, almost as more has been released or confirmed or more honesty, more transparency is happening, I feel like the reaction is less and less from people. Yeah, like oh. uh, like yeah. 10 years ago, I think this headline would have been like, stop everything else. We got to talk about the fact that we basically confirmed that there's another species making spaceships. And in today's culture, I don't know if it's because of social media, the way the news cycle moves so fast, maybe we're over desensitization, like nobody cares. I'm the only one, I'm like, why aren't we talking about this more? This is to me, the biggest story ever. It's almost that people love the mystery. And if you take away the mystery and just say, yeah, you know what? There is UFOs, go read 10,000 pages about it on this website. No one, they're like, yeah, never mind. It's almost like they once it's confirmed, they lose interest in it. That's so interesting. Yeah, I thought you were going to say something else. But yeah, there's a fun. So first of all, there is still some ridicule here. There's a lot of people that will say to me, you're destroying your reputation. Mm -hmm. Not for me, but for other people. There's a lot of people where I'll be like, they'll be like interested in it. And I'll be like, well, just go watch this documentary. It's like a super good, well done documentary. It's not like a lot of boring documentaries. Just watch, And they won't watch it. Yeah, I think that. And they'll watch a bunch of bad television instead. So I think there's also some resistance to it. I will point, it's very interesting to look at our own metrics on it. We had a bunch of new free subscribers. We lost not that many, like probably under 10 paid subscribers who were just like, you're dead to me and this is terrible. When you look at the metrics on the interest, like on YouTube, and you look at like videos on this topic, it's really strong. Like it's videos that get maybe 10 times more views than other videos. So I do think it's there. So well, I, think I guess I would say that. Right? No. Yeah. That, yeah. Because it is, I would do an interview like this. Yeah, There is interest. Yeah. I just don't think it like, 
Like, I would have assumed the U.S. Navy saying, yes, there are UFOs when they did that a couple of years ago. It was just, it came and went. And to me, that was like the beginning of this, like, all right, let's get real about it. And I, I wonder why it, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you are seeing that with your readers and people, like people are taking more of a vested interest, but. It is, no, it's changed. I think it's, no, I know what you mean though. It's more like, a, it's like, a, it's not a front page story. It's like a, it's like a inside the paper story. But they are covering it. I think the other thing is that Congress is doing stuff on it now, which is great. And the senators are taking it seriously, which is great. It's also bipartisan, which is just shocking. Like nothing's bipartisan. Yeah, I know. And then and look at this. I don't know if you saw the thing like this. There's like a supposed UFO landing in this Las Vegas house. And there was like a 9-11 call. And there's all this debate about is it they debunked it or is it a hoax or whatever. But that was covered by like, a, like if you just go to YouTube, you just see it was covered by a lot of the local network affiliates, even though people like James Fox, that filmmaker we keep talking about, yeah. he was on Twitter being like, yeah, I think it's probably a hoax, but it was still a lot of interest. And these things go in waves or what they used to call them flaps, meaning that there will suddenly be a lot of interest in UFOs. There's a little bit of a social contagion element to it. But I agree with you. I think it's people are trying to be responsible. I think you're trying to, and if you're trying to keep your reputation as a journalist, yeah. I had people that say things to me like, you believe in it. And I was like, no, I didn't say I believe in it. I say, I think the people that I talk to are credible. I think that they believe that what they're telling me is true. I think that the things that they're telling me are consistent with what many other people say. But I'm reluctant to even be like, I believe in it because I think there's a lot of danger to having beliefs. I'm more interested in reporting on it. And I do think there's some of that same, I see some of that same caution with news media and journalists. There just are a lot of hoaxes. You know, well, just well, hard, so. As the internet has grown and you know everything from Photoshop to deep fake to AI, yes. you know, Everyone's guard is up. That viral video might be fake. So there's, their guard is certainly going to be up that the alien is not real. So I do get it, but yeah. I, but here's what I don't get. So it seems to me like there, there's like conflicting sides to everything. The AR, the arrow exists, but they don't give them high enough clearance. They testify, but they don't testify. They, it seems like David Grush knows about these retrievals, but then cannot investigate on them. Like, why does he even know that things were retrieved in the first place? Why, how does that secret get out if they're not gonna let him, if he said, every time I requested documents or information on the retrieval, they said no, then how did it even get to the point where he knew there was a retrieval that occurred? Because people talk to him. Because people So, so that's just him. leaking, like that just got out. Okay, so that was the first, that's like the crack in the armor. This is, and by the way, I would make a point on this. I think it's really important because people go, it's funny, like you listen to, they go, okay, if there was like all this cover up and there's all these retrievals, how come nobody, how come it never got out? Or how did people keep a secret? And the answer is they didn't. Like, <laughs> <it> didn't. <laughs> yeah. right. so actually when you go, I think part of what adds some credibility to it is that in fact, I think that's why I keep recommending this movie, The Phenomenon, is that you go, when you look, when you go from, if you start with 1947, which is the alleged UFO crash at Roswell, until now, people coming out and people being scared and and then people being ridiculed or stigmatized and not wanting to come out or being fired or whatever. And so the information does trickle out. Look, there's been... <laughs> I didn't even tweet them because I just go, I'm trying to, the over, they call it the Overton window of what's acceptable in the society to talk about. But there's two Daily Mail stories in the last couple of days. One is a former military guy who says that he saw a UFO in Indonesia that was being operated by the U.S. military, two separate missions, one humanitarian, one military. And he says he was absolutely sworn to secrecy. He was terrified to talk about it. I think 20 or 20 years had passed and he was finally talking about it with thanks to the whistleblower protections, by the way, that Congress put in a year or two ago. And then there was another crazy story of somebody who they said they said they found a craft and the guy goes inside of it and the inside of the craft was larger than the outside of the craft. And then when he comes out of the craft, four hours had passed and it felt like only minutes 
That is also a story that's a, there's been similar stories like that told in other cases. And so one of the interesting things is you go, okay, that other people have said that and it's leaked out. And then, so you go, there's a little bit, I think it's some, it's not totally, how do I say it's in a nice way? I don't think people are being very clear when they go, they go, there's no, there's no proof. And then there, and then you give like photos or videos and they go, those f- photos and videos don't show that. You just move the goalposts every time. Yeah. You know, and they just, that's why I go, I don't think you really, I just, I find some of these guys, there's one guy I saw, I won't name his name, but one of the skeptics. And he was like, oh, I would love it if there were aliens. And I was like, I would never even say that. I don't know that I want there. To, maybe, maybe we don't want yeah, there to be. be bad. Right. Yeah. So why would you say that? Other than you're just trying to engage in some kind of a rhetorical game. Yeah. So I do, I I tend to go, I think we're making, I think the issue is making some progress in the sense that that was what I got criticized because I was like, I'm not really comfortable saying what I was told about the beans for a variety of reasons, in part because I just, first of all, it's the most speculative or it's the least verifiable. There's fewer people that have that information, but also it's, let's just set aside, let's just establish that there's actually a lot of people with high security clearances who are afraid but feel compelled to say anyway that there are non-human craft. And that is something that people, very important people are saying, let's just pause on that for a minute, because I think if we can go establish that that's being said, then you go, okay, then also it's also something you go look for. Like you actually, like if you're going to go into these places and everybody knows which ones they are, you would have some sense of what you're looking for. And if they're like, no, you can't go into that hangar or you can't go into that underground bunker, then you're like, why? And you have something to push back against. And I think I like this place where we're at now, which is, look, you don't think there's anything there. Some people think there is. So let's go find out. It's like I I get early on. It was like, I'm not going to trust some Nevada rancher who says he saw this or whatever. Okay, fine. Who do you need to hear from? So I need to hear from someone in the military. That's okay. We have Navy pilots and whistleblowers and X this and X that. And then they go, okay, then I need some video and proof. And then you show them these videos and they go, that's not real or that's not good enough. Until I fucking put you on a spaceship and send you to outer space, is that what it's going to take? Or to at least say, like you said, let's at least acknowledge that there's something happening here and ask some questions and go to the right places because at this point i almost think it's like you said earlier it's like the denial of this is starting to sound like the crazy the yes. loony to me saying that there's little green martians running around we're saying that something's fucking happening let's talk about it or when you have the when you actually have the dod itself be like yeah this video the two big famous videos ufos and the dod is yes we can't explain this on conventional means and then you get people that are not in the military being like, it's a bird or a right. lens flare. And right. you're like, but no, not even the military is saying that. So I, the just- only thing I will say there, there does feel like there's some two main things that, that feel like on the back of my head in this day and age where everyone's got a phone and there is so much video, like why is everything so grainy, everything from a distance, nothing yeah. from, if it was me and I was that guy, who went inside the ship, I would have had my phone out fucking right away. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it would have been right there in, there's no, no video like that. And then the other side of it is just a grander, like it seems like we've just jumped so far from we're trying to get to Mars with a rover lander and these little things. But also we're now saying that there's like full-blown intelligent species flying ships here That just feels like such a big leap. So those two things to me make me go, wait a minute, it does probably seem unlikely, but like, what do you think about that, those two ideas? Yeah, totally agree. You may have, I don't know if you noticed, but when I've only tweeted about this twice, I tweeted out the original debrief article, and then I tweeted out my article. In both cases, Elon Musk responds, and is I've seen no evidence of that for what it's worth. And then the second time he was like, I've seen, so, I've seen no evidence of it, and I would know. So for me, that's interesting. Now, yeah, yeah. do you think that? What do you think of that statement, though? It's I guess if you're talking about people on Earth who would maybe have some knowledge, he probably would be. Yeah, one of those guys, but maybe not. I don't know. It's like if, yeah. if what we're saying is true, maybe these other species or something are so advanced. I don't know. And then the third thing, I guess, is when people say, 
okay, they're so advanced and they can time travel from other galaxies or whatever it may mean. And they just crash land and leave their ships. And like some of that stuff, I guess, feels a little illogical, although I guess it could just be the equivalent of a drone, right? But it does feel like there's this... Or why would they crash if these are civilizations that are so far ahead of us? Well, why right. would they even crash? It doesn't even seem to make sense. That's our what they're saying, though, right? Some are, of it's, our plane crashes crash. are very rare. Yeah. And obviously, we've gotten better at it. So that doesn't. that's very confusing. I think I agree with you about the photos and the videos. I would say for the military folks, it's a little bit more explainable in the sense that if they did capture them, then it wouldn't be that hard to go and confiscate them. We that happens all the time. We they conf we confiscate dangerous. We're having a huge controversy over Trump sharing classified. It appears we don't know, but the rumor is that he was sharing Iran right. invasion plans just as a kind of bragging thing at dinner and that got out and they, uh, if, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying that's what they say. But see, when you have I important you secrets. Send that, I almost think that's impossible to, to keep a lid on that at some point. Like within a second, I'm sending that to 25 people and they're sending it to a hundred people. And then it's on social media and all these other things seem to get videos, video recorded. Yeah. And, and that's my understanding of it, and I'm not sure I totally understand, but my understanding is that's how those video, those two famous videos that came out in 2017 got out, is that there was a little, they snuck them out or they were in a gray area about what their classification was. Got it. And I think that is, yeah, so he goes, they did get out. Those were two of them. And then when you, I believe Christopher Mellon has publicly stated that, and I think Louis Alzano as well, but I, somebody has that there is much better photos and videos and they just haven't been released. In fact, I think multiple people have said that. And so I know you, you're hesitant to talk about your own beliefs on it, but when they say some of them are intact, some of them are not, some of them are, we're flying them reverse engineered. Well, what do you, what would you, if you were to assume this is real, do you think it's like a drone? Do you think it's reconnaissance? Do you think there it's manned and there are on this planet or is this just a, a tin can that flies from another galaxy? They don't even... Yeah, huge questions, right? So I tend to hold the view that Enrico Fermi held, which is that there should be... The universe should be just teeming with life. Sure. There's so many stars with planets similar distance as ours that seem capable of an atmosphere and holding life. And then the question is, where is everybody? Yeah, It's bizarre that we haven't seen more people. And so one argument for it is that the universe is full of life and that there is contact and that it's being kept secret. So that's one hypothesis. I think the other issue is just the reason I heard for why they don't say aliens and why they say non-human intelligence or non-human life forms is that we don't, is that there's this issue of as when you're doing space travel, you're also doing time travel. Right. And so one question is, what does that mean exactly? So it just gets, I got very, you can spend a lot of time speculating. And I think what I'm very interested in in my reporting is just stuff that I can report. Right, I can you head around. Yeah, you yeah, you get bogged that. down with some of the theoretical yeah. stuff and all of a sudden your, your brain kind of short circuits. Yeah. And there was things told, that's why about the beans as well. It's like, do I think it really, when people describe the beans, I did, by the way, in the New York, I did in the New York Post article, I did talk about the Brazil crash because it was it's in the movie and they do talk about it. But again, I just go, let's try to I, and I think this is why one of the I think Mick West, one of the, the UFO skeptics on tw on Twitter, he said something like Schellenberger thinks it's OK to talk about craft and not to talk about the or he's, he's comfortable talking about the craft and not about the beans. Wait, what, is that? It's what, like, beans? what is that? What is that? He said, he, I said in some interview, I was like, I want to, I'm going to, I said, I decided not to report on what I was told about the beans. It just, it felt. No, but what exactly is the beans? Was that? The, be, the non-human. Oh, beans. Uh, okay. Okay. Beans. Sorry. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The magic beans. <laughs> got it. So yeah. You, so yeah. you did not talk about the. No, I deliberately or... kept it out because I was like trying to calculate the amount of shock, just the, just enough shock. For now. Yeah, um, but I think that's important though. I guess it's, I, I guess you can make the argument who are you to decide what people can and can't accept. Man, it's, like, it's your own yeah. career and your own work. So 
do as you please, but I'm sure there are people who are like, why don't you talk about all of it? But yeah. you, if you, that's what I think is so crazy is if you were to say there, I don't know, it just seems like such a leap of, I'm wondering if we were going to find microscopic organisms ever. And then, and then they're like, you know, there's like life forms, like big brain thinking capable life forms that I think people will have a hard time to wrap their head around because it just changes every single thing you ever know and think is important about life. So I, right. I, yeah, I think you are right in that regard. I remember Avi Loeb at Harvard had already established that they felt like this, that they had observed a non-human craft. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whatever. Abu Mama. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's a pretty big thing. And so, yeah, it's exciting. It's uh, yeah. So where do you think it goes from here? Do we reconcile the fact that people are listening to the arrow department and they don't have the right clearance? Will there be any sort of actual transparency or, cause the last thought I had on it is it, it would be a convenient way to say, don't look over here at what we're doing when it comes to inflation and real life earth shit. Let's talk about Hollywood stuff over here that makes people go, ooh, ah, because yeah. it feels like they are admitting to just think out of nowhere, all of a sudden in the late, in the early 2020s, late teens, we just decided, the government just decided to say, yep, it was real. We don't know, we don't, UFOs are real and confirm this and confirm that. So part of me is then I start thinking maybe this is all organized and intended and disinformation and all that. So you think yeah. it goes one way or the other? I definitely had a bunch of my subscribers, not a bunch, but some who were like, this is to distract everybody from the censorship. Yeah. And right. I was like, it's not going to distract me from the, I promise I've got a bunch of stuff on the calendar for censorship. I'm doing a big event in London with Russell Brand and Matt Taibbi. Right. June 22nd, London, 7 p.m. In London, that's not going to be the case for me. And in fact, quite the opposite. I just, I look at this stuff and I go, some of it's cyclical. We saw, I always point out, I don't know if I have it in front of me, but there was a New York Times story from 1978 about the government cover-up of UFOs. It's like the, it was like a big New York Times magazine story. And it was like, just, it was amazing. And it came after this period where we had something called the Church Commission in the early 70s, which was a congressional commission to look at abuses of power by the FBI and CIA. It's how we know about MK Ultra and all these other programs, the spying on Martin Luther King. And sure. it also gave rise to a bunch of conspiracy theories, but it showed conspiracies. And then there was a lot of reforms. And I think there's just a lot of us that go, we're, due, we're overdue for some of that big reform energy where you have somebody that's going to get that's going to clean house a bit there's abuses of power we need better whistleblower protections you shouldn't whistleblowers are in a tough spot you're ostensibly you're not supposed to lose your job but a lot of them do because people find out that you're a whistleblower and then you're hard yeah. to work. yeah, yeah. this is never yeah. but at least you should not be subjected to serious harassment and personal destruction reporters should not have the IRS sicked on them and so I go, I don't, I feel like really maybe the most positive aspect of this is just to get greater transparency from the government and greater protections for whistleblowers. We may never get to the bottom of this in our lifetimes, yeah. but, um, it just but at least like hard for me, certain things like WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, like some people and some events seem to be highlighted and you, you got to get out of the country and you're in danger. And then something like this seems to be following this like very proper, respectful like protocol when everything else in our rest of our culture and books and movies and TV has you believe the opposite that, you know, you're going to get killed in the middle of the night for even talking about this. It seems to me like it's the most important topic, yet we're almost making the most progress in a way. So that's... Yeah. Well, the bipartisanship is amazing, right? Yeah. And the bipartisanship is Marco Rubio and Senator Kristen Gillibrand. I think traditionally liberals were more likely to be believers than conservatives, but there's some prominent conservatives that have been Tucker Carlson. I saw Matt Walsh at the Daily Wire is, is UFO interested. Sagar and Jetty at the Rising or at Breaking Points. I don't know where Barstool Sports sits on the left, sits on the left right spectrum, but it seems like it's truly more bipartisan now, and I think that's really wonderful. John Podesta is 
was Hillary Clinton's campaign chair. He's a very powerful figure in Washington. He was very important in helping to open this up. I happen to disagree with him on a lot of issues personally, but it is nice to find something where I think Democrats and Republicans and liberals and conservatives can find some agreement. I think the real problem is just these, there's some really powerful deep state actors, both in the military and the intelligence agencies that are putting up a lot of resistance to getting more transparency. And I just think they, if they can't justify it, then they need to knock it off. And they haven't been able to justify it as far as I can tell. I wonder too, if it's something where just as time goes on, like every industry as the older CEOs and decision makers yes. die off and retire and you get new blood in there, jobs, industries of all, of all kinds change. If all of a sudden people in the intelligence community come from a younger generation or whatever and says to people, we've all wanted to know this, let's let it out there. Maybe it, it will be. I tend to think though that I don't know. Not anytime soon. I just feel like if they'll probably just give you just enough to keep you like, okay, all right, we're doing something. But yeah, I even wonder if they say there's 10 to 12 to 15 crafts, you know, is that like a lie? Like we're going to, we'll give you a little bit of truth to hide the full truth that it's way bigger, way of a larger scope than we're even letting on. But I it guess could be know. the latter could be the case. Although that number was not a speculative number. It was the number that several people had arrived at. And one source said 12 to 15. And I, I never heard 20 or 30 or 100 or something that was around that number. And, and all these people who have come out in support of him are just doing so anonymously? No one else is putting their name on it? No, there was in the original debrief article, there was a couple of people that Colonel Kell, uh, yeah, there's a couple of names that vouched for that vouched for. Well, they were vouching for him, but was, yes. is there anybody else putting their name on? I've seen evidence. It's just him. Not my sources. They were, other, but other people are saying I've seen it too. They're just doing so anonymously, or no? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting, man. All right. So is this something you just continue to follow up on? You put this on the back burner and just wait if there's any more leads that, that pop up? Or is this like you're going to make investigative efforts to like uncover stuff yourself? Oh, no. I'm, I have a new lead this morning that I'm really excited to pursue. Very interesting. But we also, there's just also, it's not, I can see how people, it's so fascinating and I can see how people get obsessed with it. There's just a lot of other important issues too, and I want to make sure we cover them. And I think that what happens often when when people get obsessed with it is that they spend a lot, there's a lot of time people talking, a lot of speculation. And I find myself, especially as I get older, I just am more, I'm just, I think the world is really fascinating and it's full of fascinating realities. And so for me, it's more like, I just need something more to cover rather than, I don't want to, uh, the speculation starts to get, it's just not as interesting anymore for me. Yeah, that's why you stick to the information itself, right? The whistleblowing and the evidence. Yeah. So you mentioned the event you have with uh, with Russell Brand, which is, yeah. I didn't know he was involved in, in that way. So what exactly is that? It's in June 22nd. Yeah, so June, yeah, June 22nd, Central Hall, Westminster, 7 p.m. London, Russell Brand, Matt Taibbi, and me, we're going to expose the censorship industrial complex, and we're going to describe how and why governments around the world are cracking down on speech on social media platforms, and also why they're promoting, in many cases, misinformation and disinformation, which is the thing that they're accusing their opponents of. And uh, we're very excited about it because part of the Twitter files work was that we discovered there was a lot of censorship. It's coming from a bad place. It's often coming from people. We have a piece coming out about the lab leak hypothesis. That was always a hypothesis that should have been taken very seriously. And we now know that Fauci and Collins and others deliberately spread the lie that it was a conspiracy theory and that it was illegitimate. And that's bad. And we need... <laughs> Democracy and free speech, people sometimes, there's two arguments for free speech. One is that you need free speech to have democracy and free markets, and that it's an enabling condition for civilization. It's definitely true, 